rush. The impatient ones will fall right into our lap. said you had a super cool little buddy to show us. Where is it? Uh, I don't know. Why? Hmm. Did it just pop out of your tacit mark? Hmm. Smells good. So, is this how it first showed up when you guys were in the Norfolk Barrens? Yes, back then we... As I fought off those tacit discords, a burst of energy erupted from that statue. Two forces clashed and collided, and later, one of them emerged victorious, vanquishing the other in a violent clash. General Jian and Rover later told me it was this little thing coming out of Rover's body. It was blocking or even consuming the overflow of Thrinodian power. It reminded me of how Rover once absorbed frequency energy with his body in a similar fashion. So, we took him to the academy for a checkup with Baiju. Apparently, this little one is what we had detected before. It's a speculated space or organism hidden inside your body. Now we finally know. It shares similar frequencies with tacit discord's reverberations. It resembles an echo processed by the data bank, stored inside your body instead of a terminal. In other words, it's your own echo, captured or absorbed at some point. Without you, it can't manifest. That's why Baiju couldn't confirm just how you absorbed that echo back then. Was it you? Was it the little one? Or maybe the two of you together. And Baija discovered more after analyzing your spectrums. She found a new power source within you, similar to the crownless, but even stronger. This power comes from the tacit discord you defeated in Norfolk Barrens. So, the excess energy this little thing had consumed somehow ended up in your body, available at your disposal. In other words, there is a deeper connection between the two of you. Or, according to Baiju, it's a convergent codependency. Uh, to put it simply, you are connected. While you are two separate individuals, your energies and vitals can affect each other, for better or for worse. You may even feel each other's emotions. The bond between you and this creature is symbiotic. As it strengthens, so do you. However, if one is harmed, the other suffers. Fortunately, since it can't ever leave your side, it's not an easy target for attackers. And if they do strike, it can seek shelter inside your body for safety. Okay, now that's... Pretty much it. Baija was going to explain it to you herself, but she has to go check on a newly appeared Sonora Sphere in Zhao Zhou. Wait, wait, wait. Oh. Uh, this is too much information for me to process. Let me get this straight. Uh. So, it helped Rover fight off mm. the Thrinodian? Mm. Seriously? Mm. This teeny tiny thing could do that? <laughs> Seems Ooh. unlikely. <laughs> Look down on me. You'll regret it when you learn what I'm capable of. That poker faced researcher was absolutely shocked when she examined me. <laughs> Said I'm not just any echo, I'm a super duper cool one. Rarest of them all. <laughs> Actually, while those aren't Baiju's exact words, that is what she meant. 
She mentioned highly intelligent echoes that can act on their own in other countries. Said they are involved in every aspect of human life with unique abilities beyond our imagination. Those echoes are rare, though. Neither I nor Baiji, an eco-acoustics expert, have ever seen one in person. But this little thing here? It could be one of those foreign echoes. Yeah, makes sense. Now we just gotta figure out where it came from. Who knows? We may find other cool echoes in that place. Well, both General Jian and Baija have confirmed it. No way they're lying. I'll admit the thought of someone else having an echo inside them sounds pretty crazy to me. But with you, anything's possible. You can absorb reverberations with just your hands, like the legend says. So maybe one day you just stumble upon this little thing and soaked it up like a sponge. Sounds feasible, I guess. So... Do you know where exactly he absorbed you? Huh? How am I supposed to know? Why don't you just ask him? Yeah, it happened before he lost all memories, so we have to ask you. But even if Echoes can have memories, they probably wouldn't remember things earlier than their first manifestation. I wonder if that's the case with this little one, too. Aha! Finally! Someone with common sense. That green-haired, serious guy asked me a similar question. Sorry to disappoint, but I really don't remember anything before I showed up. Hmm... Maybe... Maybe I was just sleeping inside him this whole time. So of course I don't remember. Sleeping? Seriously? It's been so long. All those happenings, all that fighting, and you didn't hear anything? Well, wow, that's... Your sleeping quality is really something. Uh, so you've got privacy to be respected. <laughs> don't worry. Your body's sound insulation is amazing. You dive into it, and everything goes quiet. The only problem is... I never know when I'll wake up again. And when I do wake up, I get tired and hungry fast. So I have to crawl back in for more rest. <gasps> I know. It's all because I'm not eating enough. That's why you kept disappearing. You went back to sleep from lack of energy. Makes sense. Regular Echoes need to be powered by the terminal, too. Hmm, I thought you'd be really different from the usual ones we see. Turns out you share a lot in common. So you probably don't know your denomination or a nickname. No wonder everyone's been calling you the little one. Denomination? What's that? The universally agreed terms for special echoes, like names for humans. They're named based on their characteristics, abilities, and places of origin. My denomination. It's... It's... I don't know. Do I not have a name at all? What? No way. No way. That's not fair. If all the special echoes have names, how can I not have one? I don't want to be called the little one all the time. It doesn't sound cool at all. How about this? You help me come up with a name, and I will let you have some of the food. Oh. <laughs> there is nothing left. Uh, next time, next time, I'll definitely save some for you. Just, uh, just give me a name. Please? A 
a name? Now? Yes, I want it now. Look, your name's Chisha, your name's Yang Yang, and you... Uh, heh. That sounds interesting. Wait, didn't you forget everything? How do you still remember? With your old name and memories all gone, it's a good idea to go with a new one. It makes everything more convenient and represents a fresh start. Yeah! Exactly like she said. Every one of you has a name, and I want one for myself, too. I'm really not asking much. I just want a name that sounds a little cool, a little special, and epic, and super smoking. Names are a big deal, you know. Like once you have one, it's stuck with you for life. Gotta make sure it's a good one. Can't have people not scared of me when they hear it. No time for regrets here. That's true. Let's see. You want a cool one. What about Echo the Invincible? Nah. Nah. -uh. Absolutely no. That's too straightforward. It's it's no better than calling me the little one. Hey, it makes every difference in the world. I am Echo the Invincible. That's what a hero play character would say as their transformation call. Or uh, or maybe. Since you can fly, and you've got those long ears, why don't you call yourself a Righteous Raptor, or Valor Hawk, or Flying Fury? No. Absolutely no. Why do they all sound so cringy? Why? I love it when people call me the Jinjo Speedster. Doesn't that sound awesome? Huh? <laughs> Sure, if you say so. Anyway, they all sound like anything but my name. Absolutely no. Aha! I knew Rover would come up with a good... You didn't just pick two random syllables, did you? So, is it because I've been saying absolutely no a lot? Uh. <laughs> Ugh, I, I meant to tease it as a joke, but I can tell it's upset now. On second thought, a name is indeed very important. Maybe I'll have to come up with a different one. Uh, Abby... Abra... Abraxas? What's wrong? What are you muttering about? Abra... what? Sounds like you're reading a spell. Uh, I don't know, but I just have this feeling that this is what my name should be. Okay, ready? Abby. I like the sound of that. <laughs> That's my name. Of course I like it. You came up with it for me. I was just trying to get used to it. That's all. Besides, I feel attached to this name now. <laughs> my name is Abby. You will not call me the little one again. Sure, we won't. Well, that didn't work out. I was hoping we could get some answers from the little... I mean, from Abby. But now we're back at square one. I really thought we could figure out where Abby came from. It might not lead us to other special echoes, but it's at least a starting point to uncover Rover's past. Maybe we can start with Abby's special abilities instead. Each special echo has a unique ability. We can compare what Abby does with our records of other Echoes to see where they came from. Besides, it was Abby's power that helped Rover defeat the Threnodian, I suppose. Why do you sound so unsure? 
Didn't you see it all with your own eyes? Hmm. Abby, can you show us again? I'm super curious how you did that. Who knows? We might learn something. Well, since you asked, I'll show you how it's done. <laughs> but this place is too crowded. Let's move to that open spot over there. Him, all eyes on me. Ah! Well, what's going on? I'll try again, just you see. Slip. That's all. I can do it. You gotta trust me. Back then, I just stood in front of him, and that big bad Thranodian monster thing just. It just. what? So. you didn't really do anything? Huh? No, I. I definitely did something. Like I said, I was asleep. And then all of a sudden, I smelled something really yummy coming closer and closer. Uh, it was like nothing I ever smelled before. I didn't have time to think. I just had to show up and reach out for it. So maybe Abby's power activates automatically under certain circumstances. Perhaps Abby can't control it yet. Yeah, it looks that way. You can't even hold your shape for very long yet. Hey, hey, hey! Stop looking down on me! Like I said, it was just a little slip. Really. But I think about it. I just stood there and did nothing and ended up beating a Thranodian. Imagine what I could do if I actually tried. Hey, Rover. Get behind me next time we run into anything, okay? I'll keep you safe. Promise. You're so real for that, Abby. <laughs> you bet. I said I'm super strong. I'll protect him. That's very reassuring to hear. But it seems we're stuck again. I can't think of anything else to check out. Knew it. Nothing about rovers ever going to be easy to figure out. Maybe we should bring Bai Jack, Mr. Shangli, Yao, and all the researchers in Jinjo? No, in the entire Huang Long together? They'll do a nice and thorough examination on Abby, and then... Absolutely no! I said no! Told that poker-faced researcher already! I'll make it clear. I am to stay with Rover. I agree. Abby cannot leave Rover's side, but we can't just trap him here for research. Where did you absorb Abby? What are Abby's powers, and what exactly happened between you two? There are so many questions we can't figure out yet. Our Sentinel Joy can look into the future. Nothing ever deviates from its predictions. It has already sort of guided you to the Norfolk Barons through Madame Magistrate's messages, right? Now that the Thranodian crisis is over, perhaps you can consult our Magistrate and our Sentinel again. I'm sure they can offer you some more useful guidance. Relax, relax. You have me now, remember? Meeting up with that Jinshi person, getting your memories back. I've got you. Speaking of that, 
So this sentinel can predict the future? That sounds cool. The name Jue sounds pretty cool too. It's almost as cool as mine. What does it look like? Where is it? Since we're paying it a visit, this sentinel should treat us with food, right? Mmm. I wonder how the food's gonna taste. Our sentinel protects every one of us. Of course it's cool. But why are you talking about food again? Didn't you just stuff your face? What? Is your stomach a black hole? I can't help it. I'm always starving. Rover, did you hear that? My stomach is growling. Ugh, I'm so hungry. Oh, how about we go to that place we went to last time with Yang Yang and Chisha? I love their food so much. Mmm, yummy, yummy. <laughs> uh, hello? Are you with me? You seem a bit distracted. With so much delicious food right in front of you, aren't you gonna try any? Well, if you're not interested, I'll gobble it all up. <laughs> You've been absent-minded the whole day. Still bothered by that dream from last night? Wait, so you had a dream about the Sentinel? Like the one from your flashback when we saw the Sentinel statue after you lost your memory? <laughs> Hang on, so let me get this straight. The Sentinel swooshed you off to a mountain shaped like a dragon. And then there were all these bad things going on with lots and lots of tacit discords. But the Sentinel saved the day. How exactly did it protect everyone again? Oh, in your dream, it made the time different there. Yeah. The time in the mountains seemed to have slowed down from the outside, away from the tacit discords. The Sentinel must have created a barrier by manipulating the flow of time, keeping those monsters out. It was a safe haven from all the disturbances caused by the tacit discords, where people lived peacefully. Also, in my dream, I wasn't affected by the slow time and could freely move in and out of the barrier. It's no shock that you have awesome powers, being friends with me. Uh, what was that place you dreamed about called? I'm not entirely sure I heard it correctly, but in my dream, the Sentinel mentioned a place called Mount Firmament. Mount Firmament? Never heard of it. You've never heard of Mount Firmament? And I'm sure you're not from around here. Huh? Hold on! Did you just say Mount Firmament? Oh my! Did that Echo just talk? Come on, man, relax. You don't hear an echo talking every day, but it's not that uncommon either. I heard there's a country called Re... Uh, Rhinus. What? Anyway, the echoes there are next level. Oh, you're not from around here? <laughs> well, that explains why you don't know about Mount Firmament. Legends say Mount Firmament is where the first people of Jinjo live. It looks like a giant statue of our sentinel Jue. I've never actually heard of anyone going to that place. They say those who try either get lost in the sea mist or never come back. If you're curious, just head southeast. Mount Firmament is on the east side of Whining Ix's Mire. And you can see it from a distance. The southeast. The past few days, especially this morning, I caught this unique smell from the southeast, from that mountain they just mentioned.
It's like a strong energy pulsing through the air, but I can't quite put my finger on it. It feels kind of weird, though. Doesn't smell natural. Could it have anything to do with what you said? A place where time passes slowly? Hmm. Do you want to go check it out? I had a flashback about seeing their sentinel. Perhaps that happened on Mount Firmament. I can feel an unknown force guiding me, urging me to go there and find something. Jinchi said she'll go search for the Sentinel and update me on its whereabouts, but so far, I've not heard anything from the City Hall yet. Then shall we go check it out together? It feels really suspicious. <laughs> <laughs>